Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 30th of July 2018 and the time has just gone 11.55 for the summer time. Uh, it's been a fairly quiet start to the European session. Uh, this week, uh, equity markets in, in Europe are mildly in, in the red. There was a fairly large sell-off in Asia overnight and it's been a similar mood a uh, similar story to the last uh, week or so, where essentially uh, concerns about trade wars, uh, uh, global trading uh, relationships, and also um, a, a bit of a, a few um, headline, a few large company uh, figures from the United States, which failed to measure the expectations as slightly soured market sentiment here in Europe. Uh, but even though it's a fairly quiet day uh, today for the, in the European session, we do have a fairly busy week ahead in terms of economic announcements and corporate stories. Uh, the week ahead article can be found on our platform. So if you go to cmcmarkets.com and under the news and analysis section, uh, you, you will find our week ahead article. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have a Bank of England interest rate decision. We have uh, first half figures from BP, third, third quarter figures from Apple. On Wednesday, we have first half figures from Capita. On both um, Wednesday and Friday, we have the services and, and uh, manufacturing and services reports uh, from Europe. Um, looking ahead to the back end of the week, um, we have the, the beginning of the UK, um, the, the, bank, the, the figures from the, the various different British banks, uh, such as Royal Bank of Scotland, Lloyds, and also Barclays. On Thursday, we have the Bank of England interest rate decision and also the inflation report. And Friday, which will be the first Friday of the month, uh, of course, is going to be the U.S. non-farm payrolls report. So taking a look now at, at a few of the major markets. Uh, the FTSE 100, um, broadly speaking, over the last couple of weeks has been kind of creeping higher. Um, essentially, after the major rally that we saw between March and also between May, has drifted a little, um, but we, we do appear to be kind of get, re regaining those losses between uh, between mid-May and the and, and late June. The market has been fairly quiet, to be honest, in terms of market move size and volatility. But broadly speaking, it's been edgy higher. Uh, and so the, the, kind of up, the wider upward trend, it does appear that the, the wider upward trend uh, is continuing. And should we kind of continue to push on from here, we could be looking at, at targeting uh, 7,794, the, the late, the mid-June high. And if we go beyond that level, we could be looking at uh, heading back towards the 7,900 area. It's only if you can take off this area here uh, in, in around 7,565 uh, would then would actually be looked to uh, drift a bit lower. Uh, and if you do manage to push, push lower from there, a support could come into play in around the 7,600 area or at, at this red line here, which is the, uh, um, sorry, apologies, 7,500 7, area, this area, area here. And if you drift below that, Support might be found at the, the red line, the 20 moving average, which comes into play at 7,478. Take a look now um, on the DAX. <clears throat> so the chart market has, has been in an upward trend uh, for the last couple of weeks. Uh, managed to kind of pull back some of the losses that, that, that are sustained in June. And actually now managed to actually uh, trade above and hold above the 200 moving average, this red line here. So it's obviously a bit of a, uh, the 200 moving average is often seen as a kind of barometer for um, uh, what, what the overall kind of sentiment is. And, and if the market's north of the 200 moving average, it's optimistic. And if it's below it, it is pessimistic. But bearing in mind, we just managed to trade above it. Uh, and while, if, while we hold above it, uh, the outlook is likely to, to remain positive. So should we push on higher from here on the on the uh, on the DAX, we could be looking at heading up towards thirteen thousand, big psychological number. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at uh, retesting the May high of um, thirteen thousand two hundred. And if you do manage to drift back below this red line, um, the Trinity moving average, which comes into play at twelve thousand seven hundred and seventy-two, support might be, might be found uh, from this yellow line here, the one hundred day moving average, which comes into play. Uh, at 12,571, or indeed perhaps as low as 12,500 itself here. Uh, and if you do take out uh, the, the late June, the mid June low of 12,390, this this uh, this red candle here, we could be pointing back down towards further losses, and it could be uh, uh, looking at retesting the the late June low uh, in this price area here. Take a look now at the uh, S&P 500 over in the US. S&P 500 has been in a classic example of an upward trend since April, classic example of higher highs and higher lows all the way along. 
Uh, in recent sessions, uh, we, we did see a fairly sizable sell-off on Friday. Given the, the Nasdaq's um, relatively large tech component, um, the sell-off in some of the big tech stocks uh, has actually managed to kind of um, drag the S&P lower with it as well. So the S&P recently has underperformed in relation to the Dow Jones. But nonetheless, it's still, firm, it's still firmly in the, in the upper trend it's been in for a number of months. Uh, so if you do manage to drift lower on the S&P 500, support may come into play in at 2,800 or perhaps even uh, this area here, 2,791. Notice how it acted as support uh, recently and prior to that it acted as resistance. So if that area has been important in the, in the recent past, it's likely to do be important again in the potential near future. Uh, even if you do, do drift below that area, support might be found uh, in, in, in this blue line here, the 50 moving average at 2,763. Notice how there's a lot of consolidation and price action in around that area uh, only at the beginning of the month. So if that area was, was significant in the past, it may be significant again in the future. If the wide upper trend does come into play, uh, does, does, um, does continue, uh, we could be looking at uh, retesting the recent high of 2,848, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up to 2,877. We'll now take a look at the NASDAQ 100, I think it's, as I mentioned, we did have a, a fairly sizable sell-off in the S&P, largely driven by the decline in the tech sector, and also we can see here uh, from, from Friday's session, this, this red candle here, uh, it's a very clear example. Um, this is a very, gives you an indication of how, how, uh, how powerful the, the, the sell-off was. Um, but notice how it, the market has been in a classic example of an upward trend uh, since early April. Only last Wednesday, there's actually an all-time high to give an indication of how, how strong the market has been performing in the uh, in in, uh, in recent history. But like, as I said, we, we have a fairly fairly good, good example here of a, a, deep, a sizable sell-off. This red candle here. In fact, this red candle here from Friday is actually could be de described as a bearish engulfing because it managed to actually pity the, the sell-off and it managed to pretty kind of engulf the uh, the previous day's gains. Uh, so this, this could be a sign that we're in for further losses in the near term. And also notice, if you look at the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, you can see how, how positive momentum was, was in decline, uh, it's now firmly swung into negative territory. So the market's moving lower, the rate, the, the pressure from the sellers is increasing. So that combined with what could be described as a bearish engulfing candle here, could point uh, to the further losses on the Nasdaq 100. And should we drift lower, we could, we, we could see support coming to play from this blue line here, uh, 7,181. Notice how there, thereabouts, it did manage to act as support in, in recent history. So once again, it could be significant in the near term. And even if we go below the 50 moving average, this area here at 7,076 7, uh, has act, has been a, as a consolidation area and a, a fairly important price point recently. So therefore, it could act, so, uh, it could act, to be, uh, act as a point of significance uh, in the near term. If the wider upward trend does manage, does manage to, to continue, we could be re looking at retesting 7,500. And of course, you know, any moves beyond that would be yet again fresh all time highs. Taking a look now at what's going on on the commodity front, on the gold market. Gold remains in its downward trend. It's been a class example of a downward trend uh, since April. We've seen no, no kind of signs uh, of, of, the, of the gold market. Um, Snapping out of that downward trend, uh, the, the lowest that, that we that we, uh, we we dropped to uh, a couple of weeks ago were actually the, the lowest level seen since July last year. So relatively far away from one year lows, we're still are still very much in the in, in the downward trend. And if you do manage to continue to drift lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 1204, and then a move south of 1204 would, would bring 1200 into play as it's a big psychological number. And if you go south of that, we could be looking any back down towards the uh, the lows of mid. March 2017, which come into play at 11.95. Any moves to the upside in gold may run into resistance at this area here, 12.36 or perhaps uh, 12.50, but consolidation are there. And if you do have a sizable bounce back, uh, 12.66 could also act as an area of uh, resistance for the gold market. Turning attention now to to currency pairs, euro versus US dollar. So the euro dollar has managed to be has been range bound uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, hasn't really hasn't hasn't really kind of moved in either direction. Uh, but notice how we're still firmly um, lower from the April, from 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 the uh, from April and also from March. So the major setup that we saw in in April 
uh, seems to have found a bit of support and, and a bit of a bottom in around the 1 spot 15 10 area. That being said, we can't risk and see to get north of 1 spot 50. So while we, we remain south of the 1 spot, one well, sorry, apologies, 1 spot 1850, while we remain south of 1 spot 1850, it's likely that the outlook is going to remain, uh, is, is going to remain negative for, for euro dollar. Uh, but that being said, we've seen a fairly decent support from the 1 spot 1510 area as well. So. And in recent sessions, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around the 1 spot 1677 area, does appear to be acting as a fairly, as a fairly important consolidation point. So uh, the, the outlook is, is, still, is still quite, still quite um, is still a bit on the bearish side, but at the same time, we haven't seen any kind of for any kind of major sell-off recently. So we, we could see potential new, new buyers enter the fold in around the 1 spot 1510 area. Turning our attention now to the pound versus the US dollar bearing in mind we do have a Bank of England trade decision this week uh, so that that, that is to be, uh, to be noted if you're trading the British pound been in a major decline since April all the way down classic example of a downward trend you know higher highs and higher lows and um, if we do manage to continue in, in the downward trend we could be looking at retesting this this uh, the, 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 the uh, July low of one spot 29.57 uh, so we could be looking at targeting down towards 129, 128. Any bounce backs um, may, may run into resistance of this blue line here of the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 1 spot 32.43. Notice how only a few weeks ago, the 50-day moving average did actually manage to act as a resistance um, recently. So once again, if it was a significant importance uh, in, 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 re in recent history, it could be of, of a particular importance in the near future as well. And even if we do manage to, to push higher, push above the 50 moving average, the next area to keep an eye out for will be the late May high of 1 spot 34.72. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.